I was getting paid at like for the next two weeks, not work then get paid, it's get paid then work. And I never asked for that. Now, I won't give you the actual figure, but uh, for every two weeks, it's about uh, a figure between 300 to 500 dollars. Feel like in tech, if you are chief Googler, a, a, a professional Googler, uh, you you can literally do in the world. And well. um, one of my hardest gigs I ever got on fire is this Linux uh, configure it's called containers. So picture this: you have one computer, but you have you want to have five computers in it. I also so worked with an astrologer. Yeah, this is the funniest story. <laughs> astrologer, like yeah, astrologer, the science of the stars, man. <laughs> so he promotes me to become a verified Binance merchant. Now, for a verified Binance, uh, Binance merchant, I could now sell a tiny, you know, literally on the market. I could, you know, that yellow tick is a, uh, you know, is is very highly sought after. Welcome back to another episode of Our Young Show, where we tell you African business stories. Now, Leo, we are with Matendo. Most of you know Matendo as the community manager of Binance, Lakini Ali Tokauko, and he is all in another room. So, can you stand up to the show, man? All right. Thank you so much uh, for this. It's been a minute. And uh, my name is Munene Matendo, and I'm uh, the Big Get Marketing Manager Africa. Most people like uh, look at what you did. That is uh, holding the position of a community manager. By yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing we like, you know, they talk about like you know the group what you did. Now, even before to part, about Tongele Apolakini, which is one thing that made you in that position. One skill and you need for your excel in that page. Um, looking back at my career, it's very interesting because I would say um, tech guys are. The most reserved kind of stuff, your typical guy in a hoodie. But uh, I would say the key skill was interpersonal skills. You know, when someone approaches you, um, you don't care, you know, uh, whatever class they are coming from. You just treat everyone equally and ensure you actually give them, you know, the, the right hair. Yeah. So before you put it, crypto. What were you doing that before bit with your space? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> so um um I've done, you know, freelancing. Uh that was back in campus days. I've I've actually uh been selling like, uh, you know, uh, high end phones. That's that's some some of the gigs I did while um in my campus years. Uh and the reason I'm referencing campus a lot, I graduated in 2020, uh, and that's, you know, four years in. So a lot has happened in UT, but my story is start uh, back in my campus even because I was really, really, uh, you know, pushing to, you know, to having a business. Now, um, I also worked with an astrologer. This is the funniest story. <laughs> astrologer, like yeah, astrologer, astrologer the science of the stars, right? <laughs> so basically, um, uh, I joined with them. It's called the Kini Films. It's based in Los Angeles, California. Um, so my key role was around managing team of the entire uh, production for books. So one of the key skills they did that was uh, fill that hole that will be in design. So in design is all designing all those rules, but standard camera you know, person for all their, you know, uh, all their uh, techniques. And with time, I ended up having to learn astrology, even going for and create uh, an astrology now called Vastu Astrology. So let me just yeah. ask, how did you learn this work? Is an uh, in astrology. <laughs> How I I did learn this, right? Yeah. So uh, basically, in my campus years, I there's a site called Fiverr. Fiverr.com. F I V E double R dot com. So prior to me starting, or rather getting engaged in Fiverr, I used to work uh, for someone uh, based in Kenya. Yeah. The, someone from Isiolo. 
the most unassuming person you meet. Yeah. And they used to drop ship. So drop shipping is basically the concept of you buy a product in a certain region, you sell it here, but you're not buying until uh, uh, you know a client comes in and buys it. So my role was to uh, fill in their stores. So uh, connect with AliExpress, Alibaba for suppliers, and then uh, create stores using Shopify uh, to you know to, you know to to push in in the US market. Now, uh, the reason I went back there is because after I discovered this person was doing it on Fiverr, I listed my own gigs on Fiverr. But now I used to hate writing my guys. I used to hate writing. And I knew for, at, at, at some point, I made uh, a remote show. But I knew writing was never my calling. Uh, uh, so I listed tech-based gigs. Or, you know, I'll fix your Bluetooth, I'll fix your computer issues, your Windows, your Linux, I configure, uh, you know, um, some databases for you. Uh, and this is how this particular person approached me. Mm -hmm. And I took them offline where uh, now I started working remotely. TeamViewer was one of the key products there because uh, connect to their computers. Um, uh, it, what started as a, you know, as like, what started as a, simple remote, uh, you know, configurations for their own computers to communicate ended up me, to me having a close to three years, yeah. uh, you know, in, in, a, in a specific job. Yeah. And this is what I did for them for close to three years, actually. So 2019 through to 20, actually close to four, through to 2021. And yeah. that is in Canvas. And like, you know, what did you get into study or what course were you doing? <laughs> yeah. So my campus here is, uh, I feel like I want to reference my high school a bit, but uh, I've always loved technology and uh, especially things to do with, uh, you know, uh, cyber security, uh, what today is called hacking. So in my high school years, I remember enjoying shutting down all computers in a lab. Uh, simply by a simple command prompt, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, in campus, I came in, I studied at Multimedia University. Uh, I think this is one of the best universities when it comes to uh, tech related stuff. So, I studied computer tech, uh, computer technology, which uh, makes you a bit diverse. It does teach you about networking. When I say networking, I don't mean uh, knowing people. I mean, uh, you know, making computer, computers <laughs> to edit. And I graduated with, um, in network, not networking rather, I graduated in uh, computer technology, did a couple of certifications, uh, you know, Huawei, uh, HCMA, HCIP for security. Uh, I also went ahead to do something to just prove myself uh, that I was so big in, you know, cyber security uh, related uh, items. So. Uh, one of the most recognized certifications is uh, or what you call a uh, certified ethical hacker by EC Council. So I did that uh, while the high school, uh, I mean, while the campus. Yeah. And a funny bit of it is that was paid by this employer. <laughs> the There's, yeah, the astrologer guys. So I figured out the way to keep this client long term is to sell this idea of an African kid was after making it in life and uh the key blocker for for, for these africa kids is they are unable to access a, a, you know quality education yeah. so i say to them uh if you can pay me if, uh, you know uh, if you can pay these costs for me i'm going to work uh for this law for you to basically you sort of uh what do you call it that's not not a stipend but uh uh, you're improving my skills. I'm promising to work for this all. And that's how I got this particular certification. It's one of the most expensive certification. So uh, that was <laughs> that was not very easy to reach to that. Yeah. Just. So let me just ask about the money. I don't know if you have the freedom to talk about it. So while you are working for this, like, you know, as true as no there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how much were you making? Um, now 
first of all, I have to say my working hours were very flexible. Yeah. So I used to work between 7 p.m. my turn to around 11 p.m. my turn. So around four hours or four to five hours a day. Uh, they used to want to pay me, you know, by, you know, for the hour. But I wanted to deliver for you. One of the things I, I think uh, people get a from a lot is having the money from transition media before. So I need you to test my skills, then find a fair compensation. So it's best like, you know, before you, you talk, like, you know, you ask yeah. how much, what we pay. Yeah. You prove that. You prove your skill. So I come in, I get your things that organization was, you know, the, the name of the game for these guys. They needed, uh, for instance, a database which they can see um, their, you know, their, it, there is ac uh, easily accessible for it to literally everyone in the small organization. And that's what I gave them within the first two to three days. Yeah. And um, it changed. The conversation now changed. Yeah. I was getting paid at like for the next two weeks. Not work then get paid. It's get paid then work. And I never asked for that. Now, I won't give you the actual figure, but uh, for every two weeks, it's about uh, a figure between 300 to $500 while in counts. While in comfort, yeah. So, other than this, that's true. Why are you doing anything else you most read? So, if you realize, um, I had a lot of time. Yeah, because I was only working for four hours. Now, what did I do? I had the full day. So this full day was not a reward kind of job. Um, when I joined Capas, uh, I, you know, after a few, you know, months of getting used to Nairobi, and first of all, I have to say, I came to Nairobi by bus. Okay. So yeah, I was involved here. <laughs> so, um, and that was in 2016, 2015, 2016, I believe. When you're doing Capas. Yeah. Uh, that was what brought me to Nairo. So, and the reason I'm saying this is because some guys may feel like, oh, um, only guys who, you know, be tonight move, uh, uh, be born in Nairobi can actually, you know, make it in the remote space, mm -hmm. but it's not the case. Yeah. Um, one year later, I was actually selling computers in town in Nairobi City. Mm -hmm. One year later. That is 2017. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did tell any capital as I broke campus to death. I used to make the tools which were available to me. At the time, there's a site called, uh, currently called GG. It was called OLX yeah. back then. So OLX was, uh, was this new online platform where you can list your own uh, products. Yeah. Uh, same case as Jumia. Jumia, when it came in, I became a vendor, a Jumia vendor. I was selling flash disks. Uh, so that was very easy because you could just go to town, buy like five flash disks, uh, take them to their warehouse. Uh, whenever you have orders, they are just automatically uh, set and that's a little bit cheaper. You just come in and restore. Uh, you just have to know the places in town to get the, you know, the items. Things are cheap there. <laughs> now, uh, same case. Uh, so during my day, I was mostly in Nairobi CPD, trying to pass on. Yeah. I attended most of my lectures in the morning mm -hmm. and then afternoon I was no idea to found. But unless it's a very, very hard lecture, which I can't afford to miss, I miss a lot <laughs> because <laughs> again, it's public university and you can literally learn. I made friends, uh, I showed the, you know, they gave me their notes so I could easily read and, uh, uh, you know, get, get, get things going really quick. Uh, can you give us like, you know, five skills uh -huh. to do with tech? Then you're like, you know, either my visa, Amazon, you're too, like, you know, mess or man. What I've learned, nah, I was really good at was, uh, penetration testing and penetration testing is basically you get it, for instance, uh, I mean, a website URL, you have to find all the, all the uh, uh, vulnerabilities in this particular domain. And uh, what what your role is now is you'll be given permission to hack this particular 
domain. Yeah. And once you do that, you yeah. document it. So I would say that's something I've been doing with that right now because yes. if you don't practice in tech, even body, if you don't practice it within two to four weeks, my guy, you're lost. Yeah. Things change that fast and they need you to always be, you know, on top of your game. So, uh, but this is something I learned and you can easily go back to it, uh, by, you know, dedicating maybe a month's work on you learning back and practicing, you get there. Um, tech skills, I'd say, uh, creative suit, uh, I could be design, mm -hmm. uh, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, you know, oh, you I'm, I'm, yes. So <laughs> when I worked with this astrologer, unfortunately I had to, we had to do webinars. Yeah. It means I had to use Premiere Pro and After Effects to ensure they are clean. Yeah. yeah. So remove the unnecessary cuts. And these were paid webinars which had to be sold. Uh, we I configured their website. That was uh, there's a, their, their domain, which we sell, which you also have a, a, a store. Yeah. But that's managed by WordPress. WordPress is pretty easy. It's, I would say that's also a skill I have. Um, um, in terms of tech, I feel like in tech, if you are a chief Googler, a, a, a professional Googler, yeah. you, you can literally go in the and well. Um, one of my hardest gigs I ever got on fire yeah. is this Linux, uh, configure called containers. So picture this, you have one computer, but you have, you want to have five computers in it. So, uh, instead of using uh, simulating software to simulate computers, you create containers. So these containers are used especially for games. So I didn't know nothing about containers at the time. Uh, this game needed me to deliver it for hours. 24 hours. hours. I didn't know anything about yeah. containers, but in 24 hours, actually in less than 12 hours, I knew a lot about containers and even set them up. You see? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't because I was taught this. It's because I went to Google and YouTube and actually managed to uh, do it. Because there's a lot of free resources out there. And at the time, there was no AI. There was no ChatGPT. And ChatGPT actually makes it easier right, right now. So that would be, that would cut my time from, you know, 12 hours to around four hours. Uh, and that's the key role I'd say. And that, that's the reason I said, um, if you know how to be good, you just, and when I say, if you know how to be good, uh, there's something on Google called, uh, uh, not fork, but things like if, if I want to uh, crawl a certain site, you know, you're looking for insight, you just find those particular Google, Google docking commands, go find that. Um, whatever you want to find on Google, be fine. What you see on Google is very easy. Yeah. It is. So like how much like you know, the most money you mm -hmm. ever make on your fight, but that is on a single, on a single, on a single gig. <laughs> Funny thing I'll say to you is like <laughs> 15, 20 dollars. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and the reason is simple. Fiverr has a 20% so in also the cases, you're not even after that one. You're after, let the client pay, but then you maintain them offline. So they want something done, mm -hmm. they come to you, you give them a quote. Now this is not on Fiverr. They come to you, you give them a quote, uh, you work, they pay. So on Fiverr, the most I think I've sold is like $20. And the reason, um, the reason is simple because I wanted to keep long-term clients. So I ensured my gigs were very, you know, cheap. Um, I can also speak. Now, that's my own gigs. But on Fiverr, generally speaking, you can easily make uh, a thousand to thousand dollars, uh, you know, a month. If you, if you don't feel, if you focus a specific niche. For instance, the person I works for configuring spores, something very easy. Let me get, you basically import products from Alibaba to a new store. You created a trip. 
uh, for every store with about 200 products, I was getting paid up around 10,000 shillings. For every store with around 200 products. Now, for the 200 products, it's not me going and manually configuring them. They are, you just, this is where now your tech skins come in. Uh, there are uh, uh, extensions, for instance, one called the ban or on co. Yeah. You import these items and just go edit them slightly. So that something that will take you maybe three days to create because you know something extra, a tech skill extra, it takes you two hours to do it. And that's, that's the core, uh, the, the thing I, I've come to realize with technology. It just makes your work easier, which means now I can take on more games. Yes. So, uh, when did you first come across crypto? Uh, very interesting. So my second year project. So as a tech person, um, when you're in campus, you need to do projects. So, uh, some of which are specific to, you know, to you, others are mm -hmm. projects. Now, when I was in second year, my project was around, uh, uh, a voting system yeah. on the blockchain. Now I knew blockchain and never knew crypto because you understand crypto, mm. uh, blockchain and crypto, there are two different things. Yeah. Blockchain is the database. Crypto relies on this database. Now. I knew this database because I was using it to apply it in my project. I never knew of this application called crypto. Now, uh, that was the first time I interacted with uh, blockchain. And the reason I say blockchain uh, here is mostly because uh, if you look back, crypto and blockchain are, you know, crypto can't exist without blockchain. Blockchain can actually exist without crypto, but not the other way around. So, uh, first of all, that I go for my first, uh, in touch. That was my third year, 28. This is in Lewa Wildlife Consultants. And I was then pin in tech related, uh, items. I learned a lot from them. I met this person, uh, who taught me about, uh, to shipping. And while at it, they showed me something else, trading options on IQ option. Now I realized on IQ option, I was losing a lot. <laughs> so I had to find something else that works. Uh, uh, what are IQ option for now? Oh, IQ option. IQ option is your typical FX platforms. They offer you options, derivatives, um, commodities. So you can trade gold, you can trade, uh, you know, um, uh, indexes, indices as well. So it's your, what you call Forex, all right? And options, um, I don't want to go, th those are a bit harder to explain, but uh, they are basically contracts, sort of futures contracts that you're actually trading. But um, uh, the options have only two, as, as I said, you know, there's sort of, uh, I don't want to go deep into them, but basically, that's how I got into learning FX. Now, I started doing um, training options, uh, particularly, and then realized I was losing because I didn't take time, time, some time to actually teach us. So I had to find alternative ways. And that's where I first heard of crypto. So, um, unfortunately, crypto to me was so hard at the time so I did take a lot of effort to understand it but now as I said the astrologer person I was working with yeah uh, this is 2019 now uh, the, uh she used to have direct clients and these clients are your top end uh you know uh you know uh, your top end celebrities yeah. they have to come and learn their you know their charts before they publish it uh, I've told you some of these celebrities of flying, so you know them. Unfortunately, I can't say it here because of so uh, it's big like, yeah. Hollywood celebrities. Big Hollywood celebrities. And as a matter of fact, there are periods where I could go to calls. I don't know who I'm dealing with on the other end. And then I just do a quick image search on Google and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> so now, um, 
this period, I met, there's this person in crypto. Uh, there's a, there's a, he was the founder, the co-founder of Steamit Kinji. Steamit was a social platform for crypto. And they ended up creating something else called Apix. Apix is a social crypto platform where you can, uh, is your Instagram for crypto. So your app votes are counted as coins and you, you know, they are monetized. So this person was launching this particular uh, platform and they are your typical, uh, you know, crypto multimillionaires, if not millionaires, the ones who are not no, no. Uh, This person saying to us, uh, at the time I was working with all that astrology application and we had a lot of uh, code kids. So he's saying to us, um, I will help you in your crypto journey. I can't give you direct money because that will feed you for a day. I'll give you the right knowledge. So on one of the calls, uh, now this is in 2020, much, much, much later. He shared to us uh, a tiered approach in how you invest. Now it makes sense to me at the moment. Back then it did make sense to me. So looking at all, you know, your tier one, your high market cap, uh, you know, crypto tokens, uh, coins, your tier two, your, uh, you know, a bit risky tier three, your main coins. I knew Dodds uh, back in 2019. Yeah, yes. I knew she, uh, I'll be to it. <clears throat> I knew Polygon, Polygon and Mati, sorry, Polygon and um, that is Mati, but that is. And Cardano were my first crypto investments. The very first coins I ever invested in. You buy the QR Uh The equivalent of 19 shillings in Kenyan shilling back then. So dollar rate was around uh, 110. Each of them, um, <clears throat> their prices were between 10 and 19 shillings. Yeah. So always oscillating right there. That is. Cardano in uh, yes, ABA, uh, Cardano yeah. and uh, Poly uh, Matic, yeah. Polygon branded for the longest time. It's been called Matic. So yeah, and now this lady, uh, at the time I was getting paid off with, and PayPal rates, I believe it was around when the dollar was around one ten. So PayPal used to buy you dollars like one or three, and send to you the dollars one ninety. Crazy margins there. Bro. So if I'm paying a thousand dollars, I'm getting one hundred and three thousand, right? Now I realized the uh, my first exchange, <laughs> the motto of fact was Coinbase. <laughs> um, uh, my employer uh, basically decided I'm gonna pay you in crypto, starting to uh, because of what you told. So of course these are, uh, you know, the character in this particular uh, meeting decided, okay, I'm going to help this employer of mine now to invest in crypto. And this employer now, because crypto was always it was in a blue bullish trend because it was after Affin, uh prior to the 2021 boom chart. So the coins are just appreciating the other day. My employer used to pay me in dollar. So they would pay less dollar for their Ethereum, they were holding mostly Ethereum. Now I had to figure out how do I cash out these amounts for Coinbase. On Coinbase, I could use my card to buy crypto, but there was no way to cash out. Now I later came to realize both there's P2P exchanges like Binance, uh, local Bitcoin, Tano. I know a lot of P2P platforms. So, but I started now, uh, moved my Ethereum from Coinbase to Binance. I realized how much fee I had to pay. It was better for me to have received the amount in PayPal. That's when I came to learn about blockchain network <laughs> and gas fees and all that. Yeah. And what informed, informed me to buy uh, to buy Cardano was very interesting. Cardano's fees were very low. At that point, I did know about blockchain transactions. So I knew if I convert my Ethereum once I'm paid to Cardano and send it to Binance, I'm going to pay less than 50 shillings worth of transaction fee. But if I send my Ethereum, it was going to charge me about 3,000 shillings. 
So that's that's what informed me to now buy Canada. Now later when I came to learn on why that was so, uh, you know, on Canada you're using blockchain again, guys. This is not a promoted post. This is just what I use to do. Yeah. To do. Yeah. Like you know, after this whole experience and your employer, like you know, connecting you to to these people that uh, taught you okay. or make you learn about crypto. So, uh, how did you connect with the Kenyan crypto community? So that was very interesting because um, for the Kenyan crypto community, I first started um, again. This story continues from my employer for me getting paid uh, to me now having my funds in Binance and uh, realized there's a day I was supposed to cash out but then I slept and uh, mistakenly slept and I wake up today the, the next morning and the amount of money I left in Binance is much more than what significantly much more yeah. than what I had then I realized I would go lead Cardano, yeah. ADA. And during that night, it went up by more than 50% in a single day. During that particular night. That's when now I decided, okay, I'm going to take this thing seriously. So I started training, uh, you know, not even knowing what I'm you know, what I'm actually doing with, trying to look at charts, uh, and you know try to get what I can be able to make. So, uh, fast forward, I later came to realize after the initial uh, crash in 2021, that was in print. The first, you remember we hit, I believe 60K uh, on Bitcoin. And then we had a massive crash to around uh, 30 something. Now we are yes. And then later on in September, we hit September through to December, I can't recall the actual dates, we had the second run. Now, um, at this point, I lost a lot of money in crypto. crypto. Yeah, Is at some like point, in... I was holding over $3.6 million. That was December 2020. $3.6 million. Yeah, not $3.6 million. Yes. Don't make that. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> $3.6 Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> how, how, your time in crypto, you found how much? Uh, it was below, it was cents of a shilling. Yeah. I can't support the actual price, but it was, I could afford it. Yeah. With my salary. <laughs> no. Um, uh, for squads, I lost a lot of money in it. So I decided I'm going to, this thing has shown me potential. So I'm going to. So just to ask, like, uh-huh. you know, did you lose the money because like, you mean, you are holding then price it and turn? No. Um, how you I was, I was doing the opposite of holding. And that's why for those of, of you who know me, yeah. I'm a big advocate of, uh, dollar cost averaging your way of, you know, you are way into crypto and you are way out of whatever you're taking. It's, now I was this at the time, Elon Musk was very vocal around Dogecoin. So we are trying to trade the news. And all of a sudden, uh, we are out, you're trying to beat the markets and the markets are more uh, wiser than you. So you're always <laughs> uh, and that's, and that's how, uh, we lost a lot of money from that experience. Yeah. Now I decided, uh, I've seen a, a lot of tension here. Okay. So I'm going to beat a lot of effort here. Now, the same period of time I graduated. That is 2020. Yeah. December 2020, that's when I graduated. Uh, and I had a lot of pressure from family uh, to get myself a good job. Uh, and the reason I'm talking about this, but uh, I'm going to get to the community. Um, it's because I think sometimes you just have to listen to yourself. At this point, um, you know, all of my uh, older brothers, <clears throat> you know, they had your dream jobs, you know, top banks, not even global banks, you know, international banks, uh, top, uh, engineering firms, uh, that's international engineering firms. That's where my brothers used to work. Right? Uh, 
at the moment, I was this kid who was just was dealing with some weird money, right? So did you want to get into like, you know, uh, before you had that as crypto, uh, did you want to get into the finance sector that is the bad sector? No, I've never loved that 95. Yeah. <laughs> never wished anything uh, on me. Unfortunately, I'm working on one. <laughs> While it's remote, yes, I'm working on <clears throat> Now, my aim was, I don't want to go to an office job. I'm a tech guru. I can literally work for the year. So, when I learned, I actually did a game with one of the top, uh, uh, actually, a product everyone has used. That's what I can say. Uh, international product. And the reason I don't want to add it specifically here is because uh, I resigned within a month. Yeah. <laughs> it was very interesting. I, whatever the amount, th this one was more of me being young. Yeah. I would call it sort of stupid. I, I was looking, I knew I was looking for money. So money was my key motivation. And uh, at the time, and uh, this farm, whatever I could make in crypto in a week is what I was getting paid in about for this guy. So it didn't make sense. But that's why I should be the first. But I was doing a cyber security model. For those who know cyber security models, uh, they sort of pay pretty well, you know, except in Kenya when <laughs> not, not specifically targeting a, a, a certain country, but they uh, most of, unfortunately, I don't think Kenyan uh, organizations take cybersecurity really seriously until recently. And that's the key, you know, um, you know in terms of the compensation, it wasn't like anything with the yeah, worry. Now, um, I'll go on to say uh, after this particular pressure, I decided, yes, crypto has, you know, gone down. And I need to learn why, what mistakes did I make? So that period between April through to October, yeah. I could spend 10, 16 hours a day doing nothing else but crypto. Let me just ask, mm -hmm. do you feel like um, when crypto that is tanked, no. you can't have a market? Ama? No, um... I'm not a seaman, but I have a market. Like, <laughs> you put on the day. Like, we feel sky to put this courage to get that on it. Hey, you didn't stay the courage. Yeah. <laughs> because I saw opportunity in futures. I saw how much we were making in futures, shorting the market. And wow, how do I learn this? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what came to mind. Uh now to pen the uh, uh first word, I came to learn about the P2P during this learning period. I remember calling my friend Tim. Tim um we met when I was sending phones and all that, and uh, I introduced him to crypto. He decided to follow me. I didn't know nothing much about crypto. Yeah. <laughs> so we were learning together. At this point, I had about 20,000 shares. I put it, I, I was always asking myself this question. What is it that when I go to P2P and when I'm selling, yeah. I'm getting lesser money than when I I, that was the question I needed to answer. So I realized I had to post my own adverts for me to be able to sell at whatever price I want. And I posted an advert. And this is Binance, sir. Yeah. So Binance, there's a lot of volume. And within the first 10 minutes, all my crypto was bought. Actually, less than 10 minutes, all my crypto was bought. And I wasn't, I didn't even have that badge of a matchup. So that's, that's the first part. So within the first one hour, I'd made about 1,200 shillings from 20,000. Now, while that sounds like a, you know, a small amount, picture it percentage dollars. You know, it could easily make, with little to no risk, I could easily make, uh, you know, more than 5% in one hour. So <clears throat> I called him in excitement saying, hey, bro, I've discovered this. Uh, instead of us only selling this, you can just be in, on this side. We post our adverts, we buy, we sell. Uh, we buy at a lower price. We send you at a higher price, a slight 
virgin. Mm. And then I discovered Nigerian market, you know. Mm. And the reason I actually gave the, those particular figures is to tell everyone, you don't need the number of money to get started on food. Um, um, now, I proceeded to start educating my college mates because that's the only way I saw it fit for me to be able to. When I'm learning and I'm educating you, it just, the concept sticks in my head. So I used to offer free classes on Saturdays and I used to post on uh, our college communities. Of course, at this point, you already graduated and people are looking for jobs and it's me trying to tell them, look guys, uh, I'll train you for free. I don't need anything from you. Just come in, love. Saturday mornings, I was doing these free trainings. And during the day, of course, I was learning while training what we do. So that's what used to give me every day. Months. And P2P was free. I'm telling you just saying. Um, uh, and that's how I could afford to maintain the asset that they got. So fast, fast forward, the BD for Binance at the time, I go to Wakisha. Identifies this drawing crypto community. So when offers, uh -huh. so like when you call a, a brand for that community, I'm a, a, yeah, I called it crypto farm K. Crypto currency family K. And then at the time I was calling myself Brian Adams on uh, long story on the <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, landed me that astrology job for just calling myself Brian Adams. And so on. Uh, my merchant trading name was B underscore at ADA Brian Adams. You know? So I called this community crypto firm uh, Bada B underscore ADA. So, guys, I, I decided let me just have this WhatsApp group, send link everywhere. Remember, at this point, I don't even know anyone in the crypto community in Ken. So anytime I trade with you and your merchant, you posted an advert, I'll send you an, uh, an invitation to a community. Uh, a community now we you are creating, not know we are actually creating community. Mm -hmm. Later on, I come in and I realize someone inviting me to a merchant community in Kenya. And there was a merchant community in Kenya. Um, it was specifically for Binance merchants. I joined the community. And now for most P2P merchants, unfortunately, they, they don't know much past P2P. So I decided to educate them. At this point, you know, I'm into DeFi, big into DeFi. So, you know, you're bridging, your airdrops, your NFTs. At some point I held some of the, one of the highest rated NFTs I held. So we had to figure out how to get these NFTs for free <laughs> and get, you know, listed. And that meant us joining the communities, the Discord communities. And then we'll join in a lot of guys and she'll one person to become a moderator. And then the communities, of course, will notice this person where she lives. This person is always talking, talking, talking and giving very good information. So they get selected to become moderators and moderators are the ones who are selecting who is to, going to get a white list and those who are us <laughs> that's that's what we did in terms of shining NFTs. now uh, back to the Kenyan crypto community so i joined this merchant community i invite them to join our classes purely free and this is where now george bakisha the then uh binance business developer for east africa joined used to join these classes so George identified me and then realized it's the same person who just accumulated about 800 trades. Yeah. So literally it's the same person. So he promotes me to become a verified Binance merchant. Now for a verified Binance, uh, Binance merchant, I could now sell at you know, literally on the markets. I could, you know, that yellow tick is, uh, you know, is, is very highly sought after. Now, I have to just interrupt. Before that is, uh, we look away from the communities. Yeah. I understand at the moment, uh, the communities in Kenya, especially the crypto communities. Yeah. Back then, is Rikwanga, like, Rikwanga, big deal, 
what was it? Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't attending meetups. That's the key thing I missed. My first meetup to ever attend was a Binance for the anniversary, which George hosted, uh, Makisha hosted, and invited top merchants, top affiliates, top um, uh, top crypto OGs in the current, in the, in the then current uh, Kenyan crypto community. And that's how I attended my first crypto meetup. And then knowing me to Tokativa there at the time, uh, so excited about crypto. I'll come in, tell everyone about what I'm doing in crypto. And now all of a sudden, everyone is interested in what I have. So I put, I put them into my crypto community, crypto farm. Uh, go out to teach them. Even some of the OGs actually joined this particular community. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, of course, now George comes in later, uh, says to me, look, uh, we're actually something I've made me should mention. At some point, I was paid to join Binance uh, online sessions to speak around. It's around $100 for one hour. For one hour. Yes. So that shows you I had accumulated a lot of skill. It didn't come in easy. Um, uh, I had accumulated a lot of skill. But I also much appreciation to Patricia who saw, you know, these particular people who were actually pushing themselves and came in and, you know, made part them. Yeah, it wasn't only me. We had a couple of guys. Maybe I stood out later, but we had a couple of guys. Yeah. So, Abokwa, you said you you got the the tip that is on Binance. Yeah. So like, you could literally sell at any market. Literally any market. Uh, I could. Uh, buy not at zero fee. Now that tick, um, something maybe I'll tell you right now, and may, most people will think about this. If you're buying crypto on Binance Lite, where you are automatically matched to a merchant, Binance does not match you. Unverified merchant. So if you don't have that tip, Binance doesn't match. So I could sell at significantly higher prices, increase my margins because I have that tip. Yes. So as a merchant, uh, is <laughs> uh, as a merchant, Labdom has a two party rings. Like, you know, how much have you ever moved as a merchant that is on a, on a single, on a single trip? Ever moved? On as a merchant, as a merchant, on buying uh, some uh, of the any other product, on a single trade, um, uh, it's a range of more than twenty k dollars, less than fifty k dollars somewhere. So, and what you move is kind of about yet. Yeah, you know what the percent that you get. Uh, you don't look at it from a percentage view. You look at it from a uh, per dollar difference yeah. range. So how much shillings am I making for every ball I sell? So $10,000 uh, you're targeting about 3, 4 shillings. So 30,000 to 40,000 shillings. Eh? So how did you learn the Gevon at Binance as a community manager? And before then, like, you know, what other would be won? Okay. Um, so in terms of other roles, um, as I said, by hands of the uh, one I did want to really the teacher in the CV. Um, uh, but we've talked mostly around freelance. Uh, for I would say, my answer is my, my first, you know, long term, you know, job. So uh, I was an angel. And after I joined from this particular gate with Mokisha, I became an angel and with angels used to be here for events, educational uh, items, uh, you know, such pieces. So with time, uh, Binance at some point needed to hire a uh, Kenya and Mokisha uh, had already identified that I skinny. So I was presented for an interview uh, when the manager, the, at the time, the Africa manager came in. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this was at a point when I actually, funny story, I didn't want to join Binance. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, three days later, they, you know, I was told, go think about it. It was on a Friday. Yeah. Uh, I gave a response of Bangi and I said, okay, fine, let's do this. 
And my chief reason in this hour is I don't believe it has. You know, as, as a finance employee, you can't trade. It's inside that trading policies, you can't just do anything. So that was in March 2022. That's now where I, that was my first time, you know, joining Binance. So joined Binance as a community manager for, uh, at the time it was Kenya. Then within a few months, we came in South Africa. We saw a responsibility for Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, uh, and one island, one Seychelles was in East Africa. Yeah. So just to go back for the interview. So how was the interview like? Was it a leader's one? Any? How was it? Honestly, that was the easiest interview I ever had. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, because I was an angel and I was clearly so one of the most talented angels. They knew I knew my stuff. Uh, now, they came in at a point where I was volunteering for a finance meetup. It was one of those night of the summits yeah. that it sponsored. So they came in at a point when I, I was volunteering. So I sort of knew how to be shit. Uh, not the best, but a bit of an idea of how to do events. And part of managing communities is around uh, keeping guys engaged, acquiring the community guys. And uh, make sure that they use our products as well as, uh, you know, uh, ensuring the community is actually listened to. So whatever feedback they share, I literally every Friday I had to compile the positives, the negatives, the product requests, and now reports, uh, you know, and now try to have this, you know, uh, work. Yeah. So like... How engaging is, like, you know, was that what you have to buy this is not for you to my opinion. So I'll tell you this, you're hired as a community manager, you can literally do anything else. So Binance is a very cool training crowd, and I appreciate Binance for that. It was my current role. I would never have thought I, you know, I came from a tech background. Yeah. Uh, how am I a marketing manager for Africa? <laughs> yeah. uh, something totally different. Uh, at Binance, um, the first few months is sort of manual. So it takes you quite some time to learn. Uh, then once you get on code, you get access to systems. Now it's up to you now to start learning how to, you know, prove yourself all the, you know, uh, prove yourself and your skill. Now, because of my tech background, it was very easy for me to learn things like CRM. Uh, CRM is basically when you receive up pushes, emails, emails, that's, uh, you know, segregating groups and all that, like knowing uh, who to send what email. So that was very easy for me to learn. Uh, same case, uh, for community side, you had to literally sit down and think what does not the other person is thinking. You know, what does that, but, you know, this particular user, what are they thinking when they're sending this message? So put yourself in search and then try to uh, derive things. Now also coming up with community campaigns, coming up with GitHubs. I have done over 50 GitHubs across Africa because of yeah, And most of my meetups have been, uh, they are not small, 150 plus trees. If you have attended any Binance meetups, you know, they are big meetups. And I, I would say with pride, Binance meetups as some of the most educational events you ever see. Uh, I decided uh, two things. Educational meetups are easier to host because you have less moving parts and they provide the most parts. So we even did regional meetups. I remember going to Uganda in a small village called Poima, doing a meetup there because uh, from Looking now, you also have to look at the data. You know, I see sometimes guys asking, uh, why are you not doing meetups in here? But you only 50 guys were, less than 50 guys were actually active in terms of that. You know, it has to make logical sense for the organization. So there are things you also have to consider. So for, for instance, this village, we noticed there's more than 300 active users. So we decided if we do a meetup, we are probably even going to WhatsApp. 
what that was one of the most uh it, that was my first meetup in Granda for instance i it was i think one of the best meetups i ever did then uh looking at smaller niches you you know my chance you need to treat them differently these are not people who even to push us they already know that those are people who need you to accept and uh this is one of the challenges i see in most companies uh they have a preset mind that when i come in uh you know we worked in europe this way it worked in china this way or not china rather but in asia this way uh so it you should you know it will work in africa this way you know in africa a typical african user is probably here for in crypto today take a so 30 50 days late yeah so by to, to answer your question at finance i think I, it was a proper training ground i ended up learning things like kol management affiliates uh uh you know uh, crm community uh socials at some point i used to do the social plans for east africa related channels we had a facebook telegram uh and all these you know we built crypto communities in africa africa actually arguably has the biggest crypto community community bigger than binance english so like the the telegram community on binance yeah uh, was it there when you were starting i uh, it was um we had that till binance kenya yeah binance uganda now we came in and at the time i got all the communities when i got them was uh, we had 8500 community members i remember my kkbib at that and when i took over and started doing you know this work and understood what i'm supposed to do after like two three months later there's a period i had 14 months sorry 14 weeks week over week of growth no single drop and you know if you grow for instance this week it's very hard to sustain it next week there's usually a correction and then it proceeds so i hosted campaigns uh you know and when i left binance the cumulative uh community numbers were upwards of 160,000 so that's for africa um that's bigger than binance group in terms of uh sorry uh, Neza to patia rate ya the community manager you don't have you don't have to give us the like direct on uh for community managers and scripts uh it depends with your work uh but at Binance and Spect uh actually not that bad in I want to quantify the full crypto wind so for most of these uh you know crypto large exchanges uh a minimum of like let's see a thousand dollars yes uh if you chain yourself you can get to 5k but yeah so and that's a side of bonuses bonuses are usually some of the best uh is things maybe these companies in for free are uh, you know you have a health insurance which literally covers e- there's nothing that can happen to you that you ever feel like I won't afford this yeah. because there the shirts I was that bonuses can be and the the bonuses can be up to an annual salary as a lump sum like uh, you know can get your full salary in one lump sum that's the net strong like what so now uh, I'll typically encourage guys to join these uh, you know crypto it's you know these these are niche jobs yeah. but what i'll say is it's not very easy to get these jobs because you need to really to not just be good in operations you also need to be really good in interpersonal skills uh you need to be good in uh like there's a couple of other things you need to be really good in. uh it doesn't mean if you know crypto alone then come up with it when it does it work like that uh you, you you need to have extra strings and of course you have to have a strong understanding of you know crypto you're going to deal with a very highly educated scholars yeah. i've never found myself in a space where i'm unable to answer something yeah. um i've always 
either come the courses. And if I'm unable, I'll, I'll, uh, initially, I'll just say something like, uh, let me get to this information in a short while. And I'll just quickly make a certain and know what to like, this is here. And the beauty about crypto is they, they are the core items. Once you learn those, yeah. the other, the rest of them are just pinned in those. So uh, you can be asked something specific to a certain ecosystem. So you just need to learn what does this ecosystem do yeah. and what does this specific thing do. And that just explaining it using the logic of even what you learn through this level. So, um, yeah. So uh, to head on to, the, to your next thing. Yeah. So currently you are holding the arrow at BitGet yeah. as the market marketing manager yeah yeah so uh, first question why did you leave finance <laughs> uh to get to big get okay um for those who know me i've relieved finance literally i had a bang on it was here since 2022 and why not something then tells you the matter okay. honestly my closet right now as 90% Binance related merchandise, then the little ones are like what I have now, <laughs> like my own clothes. And I'm a minimalist. So what that ends to be is I'll often clear up my closet. So, uh, and what I'm trying to communicate is for most of these crypto companies, when you join the ecosystem, you just leave the ecosystem. So, uh honestly balance was really good yeah my reason for leaving was i needed to challenge myself so uh i got to a point where i felt like i've hacked community management i've hacked what's under me yeah and the room for growth is very minimal yeah and i needed to have something that actually challenges me and uh, when this marketing role opened up in Africa, yeah. I felt I was, you know, among the best people to fit in. Yeah. Uh, I had my interviews and the interest in which is like, I only did two interviews and they, they were sure of the best. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, what will you do as a marketing manager? Well, <clears throat> that's, that's quite a lot. And uh, let's see. If this is a question I can answer. Yeah. Um, now, you have to analyze each part. Um, yeah. you know, you know, the key markets, of course, you have to look at them. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the key markets because those mm-hmm. permit you available information. You are uh, Nigeria, Topsy Toll, uh, Kenya, South Africa, Shana, uh, the rest of them, I'll tell you, because those are my key focuses. Uh, and well, to you know, this is what I'd say uh, information which is not a, a public agree. Now, when you think about these markets, they consume products differently. So you have to sit down and analyze using data. You have dashboards and all that. Uh, you look at this particular type of data, uh, you know, to accept this. Uh, these are these are the kind of users you expect to find in a certain market. And uh, while you may think, for instance, sport training is among the best products, but well, unfortunately, you not. Know, P2P is the most used product in Africa, and arguably so because uh, there is there is uh, you know you have to on on ramp and from. So one of the things you have to think about is uh, user channel. When you join uh, this exchange, there's a reason you're joining this particular exchange. So you have to think about positioning the brand where this particular user will move. You have to think about partnerships. You have to think about uh, user lifecycle uh, management of carriers and affiliates. You have to think about uh, campaigns, uh, community, socials, um, you know, there's performance marketing, you know, your paid ads, your 
you know, you have to think about all these in one basket and now break them down to different markets. Think of how Nigeria consumes these more um, because of a certain problem X. So sell that to Nigeria, sell that to Kenya. We don't know Kenya. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. I give you this because it's probably free available data, but people in crypto space don't realize that WorldCoin is the most reorganized country. It's not even a bit there. So you have to think about how to sell such a niche. And one of the key challenges people have usually have is how to cash out your one coin to the Kenya Shigi. I've seen a lot of agents coming in between and trying to, uh, you know, uh, give very bad pricing. And yet these exchanges are here to your well. Yeah. So how do you feel like the um, BitGate differs on Binance? You know, as exchanges get bigger, you, uh, yes. they, there is a lot of bureaucracy. And that limits you to how what you can do. So you find out that as exchanges get bigger, unfortunately, some of them don't keep, don't even end up not listening to the communities. And uh, with small exchanges, because you are after that particular user, you can eat, you know, you actually have to actually listen to this particular person, collect their feedback and action it very fast. <clears throat> It big exchanges because there is a lot of bureaucracy. It limits your thinking. There, there's something you know you can't do because the legal team won't approve, or because the compliance team won't approve, uh, because the community team won't approve. You know, there's like different checks, and these checks limits your thinking. Uh, now you end up having similar looking campaigns, similar looking like ways in how you manage your community. And unfortunately for Africa, uh, such thinking may limit your profit. And that's the key reasoning to me as a, you know, from an employee part of it. And um, with a user's perspective, the key differences here is what BigGate gives you versus Binance. And that is access to low market cap crypto tokens faster. Access to a lot of tokens, top trending tokens. You want have a coin, you want uh, not tabs of, you want a uh, hamster combat to trade it on uh, pre market. You know, pre market, how pre market works. A coin which has not fully gone to sell, it can be available for users to trade. So you can literally go get your tokens and just come in here and treat them on the market. Something that, uh, because now these are small exchange, they're able to offer such uh, because they, you know, they clearly listen to the user very fast and um, lock in some of these particular partnerships faster. Based on the user's perspective, what does the user want? So that's the first thing. Uh, actually, that's the key thing. Um, that's the key difference. One exchange is big, so they they take way too long to list tokens. The other exchange is small. They have a lot of tokens listed before this exchange lists it. And that, well, what this means for the end user is if you're getting this from this exchange, the bigger exchange, you're getting it at a wrong time. Because already... If it's getting listed on the largest exchange, just means there are people who've been bolding and about to sell. So highly likely, if you've looked at even the new listings, they usually come in and tank. That's the behavior. If you look at the charts. So my recommendation um, for all those people who want to make uh, you know significant gains in crypto, uh you want to use small exchanges because they give you access to more tokens. Yeah. So uh, as we conclude, I know you've shared that advice. Yeah. But um, what advice would you give to someone who is maybe not into crypto, he is a newbie, but 
I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, which is the, the best way, like, you need the surest way, like, you know, someone can build a, a career or a source of income. Uh-huh. Or yeah. crypto, or even maybe the blockchain. I'll say, I'll break it down two ways. Yeah. You have access to funds. You don't have access to money. You know, two ways. You have access to funds as well. Now, break it down yet again. I have time to trade. I don't have time. I have a working job. I have time to trade, get into the markets, learn narratives, things like, oh, today Solana is trending, the top coins of Solana. Phantom is trending, the top coins of Phantom. So that's the, you know, you have access to money, but you have, you also have time. You have access to money, you don't have time. Uh, get the top 10 motives. And then the key narratives we've had. So in this case, for for instance, right now is gaming, AI, and of course, blue chips. Blue chips are your top 10 coins. Create portfolios and dollar cost average. So you buy smaller hunks. So maybe I have $10,000 to invest. I know the crypto market cycle, you know, after half a year, you're, you're likely to see a bull market 12 to 18 months later. So this is the best time to be investing. So I allocate my... I want to invest a tech. My exposure will be ten to fifty thousand dollars, and that's what I can afford, right? So I take my the um, actual amount I need. I'll buy USDC. I'll keep it in an exchange that, uh, for instance, coming to BitGate, BitGate supports auto invest, where you create the specific tokens you want to invest in, and then it buys automatically every day. Now, what does that help you? Uh there's a key saying where we say time in the market is greater than timing the market. So if you're trying to time the market when it's slow to buy, unfortunately, the market has ways to sort of do the opposite. So instead of doing that, take a more uh, data and mathematical approach where you buy significant, you know, if it's $50,000, I want to spread it over 365 days divide it by 365 days, you know how much you should have every uh, every this period of time. And the best part about these exchanges, is, uh, for instance, on BitGet, you can put your money to earn you flexibly on flexible earn while it's still taken from that to buy from these particular tokens. So BitGet earn is one of the best products I've seen. So, uh, so that's someone with money, no time, right? It talks about someone with no money, no time. Someone with uh, no money at all. Sorry, this was someone with money and time. Now, this side, someone with uh, enough funds. Sorry, this is no funds at all. No time. No funds, no time. Crypto is not for you. Uh, no funds, you have time uh, going for uh, airdrops. So farm airdrops, they are free. The tasks are very easy. Uh, I've seen ZK Sync giving out a lot of uh, funds. So get that. That's the best way for you to do it. Farming airdrops is the best way for you to make a lot of money. A friend of mine, uh, you actually know him. I'll tell you the name. Recently got this airdrop and uh, they got about $40,000 worth of tokens yeah. in airdrops. $40,000. Beats even some of these investments. I'll tell you that much. So that's, that's my key advice. Uh, dollar cost average in the market. So dollar cost average out of the market. Have a strategy to come in and help them. Sandy Sana. All right. We got you for the advice. Uh, thank you for creating time for, for this show. Morris, thank you so much. Uh, I believe we'll be back here soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, in a few years, once we accomplish what we are after. Mm-hmm. And of course, for the Kenyan crypto community, uh, again, <clears throat> BitGate is here. Access your tokens uh, easily. We have, we even have MPESA deposits. Guys, you can literally... Um, Create a point, uh, create a request. A pop up will appear. You input your M-Pesa code, and it's done. 
your transaction is successfully and that takes less than three minutes actually less than two minutes so um big gate is now your top your, your you know your go-to exchange for all your tokens as well as and uh, deposits and withdrawals